Well, hey, friends, welcome to today's Daily Cup of Encouragement. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's from Psalm 139, verse 14. That thought came to me as I was pondering the way we communicate with each other. If you and I were to sit across from each other in the two antique rocking chairs in my office, each of us with a piping hot cup of coffee, we would be able to communicate through all of our senses. Words would be part of our interaction, but so would tone of voice, pace, and facial expression. Not only that, the room layout, decor, temperature, aromas, and taste of the coffee would either enhance or hinder our effective communication. One of the challenges of digital communication is that it eliminates the sensory input. When we send an email or post something on social media or send a, a text message, we're left with the verbal content, the words that we use, and the accompanying visual images. For that reason, we sometimes forget how important it is to be intentional and strategic in the words and images we use in digital communication, especially social media. I'm going to show you a couple of images that I use today to, uh, to highlight to the verse that I want to highlight today, the, the portion of scripture I posted today. 1 John 3.20 says, God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Here are two images. The first one and the second one. Now, how do those images make you feel about the reality that God knows all things? As far as God's truth is concerned, how we feel about it is not particularly relevant. But whether the reality that God knows all things is received as an encouraging security or an ominous threat may be largely influenced by the way we choose to communicate God's truth in a particular context. As we seek to communicate God's truth to others, it is our responsibility to communicate in a way that is consistent with the heart of God and with the biblical context. Here's 1 John 3.20 in context. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We also should lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. Here's the message. Even after, and, and that's from 1 John 3, 16 through 20. So, so here's the message. Even after we have been captivated, consumed, and commissioned, sorry for the alliteration, by the love of God, so that we live demonstrating his compassion, there will still be times where a condemning internal voice tells us, nope, not enough. How can you call yourself a Christian? Well, we can listen to that internal voice of condemnation, or we can listen to the reassuring voice of God who knows all things and who does not speak with condemnation to those who are in Christ, according to Romans 8.1. That's why I think the love note image is more contextually accurate than the video camera. And that's why I try to be strategic in how I communicate digitally. So the question for today is, how will you be strategic and intentional in every way you communicate the truth of God? Be amazing today, my friend.